Steps to make other planets hospitable. It's not inconceivable that in the far future, mankind will discover a planet that is suitable for colonization. This planet would have to be the perfect distance away from its star so it could hold liquid water. It would need to be of sufficient mass so its gravity could retain an atmosphere. And it'd be helpful if there was a large Jupiter-type planet in the nearby neighborhood to bully away those pesky asteroids. But what else would it need? Where would we need to start? How do we make another planet our home? Number 4. Turn on the gas A planet won't feel much like home if you're forced to wear a spacesuit 24-7. And nor would it be sustainable or desirable for human colonists to be perpetually confined to a base. The creation of an atmosphere is therefore crucial to the establishment of a long-term settlement on another world. But how can this be achieved? Can we buy atmospheres in cans and spray them in the air? Could we imbibe cows with the ability to expel gases other than methane from within their mighty bowels? Probably not. Even if you had a billion atmosphere-guffing cows ready to pump out their loads, Mars's lack of a magnetosphere means your artificial atmosphere would float out into space. The Martian atmosphere is thin due to its lack of magnetosphere, which was probably discarded when its core cooled billions of years ago. With no magnetosphere in place, its atmosphere was stripped away by solar winds. To solve this problem, in March 2017, NASA outlined a bold plan to launch a giant magnetic shield into space to act as a magnetosphere surrogate. This scheme may help Mars and indeed other cold exoplanets to restore their atmospheres naturally. And if they need a little helping hand, Elon Musk thinks we should nuke the planet's poles. Number 3. The Heat Is On if our chosen planet is too chilly to retain liquid water, then heating the place up a little will be the second task on our list. And this is where things start to get fun. Because there are two nasty things we could import from Earth to help build ourselves a nice toasty planet. Global warming and nuclear weapons, which is also my favorite flavor of ice cream. We could use solar mirrors to do this. These giant, shiny solar sails would orbit the planet and provide both heat and solar energy for colonists on the ground. But with giant mirrors in the sky, everyone might get self-conscious and hide underground. And what happens if some of these mirrors break or Jupiter steals them to check out that weird zit on its back? A more permanent strategy would be to use the atmosphere we've just created. Once we've got some kind of gassy blanket going on, we'll want to make it thick enough to trap reflected solar energy. Carbon dioxide will do the trick, and there's plenty of frozen CO2 trapped in the Martian polar ice. If we sent a swarm of thermonuclear devices towards the poles, they would melt and evaporate, kick-starting the global warming process and eventually filling the atmosphere with delicious CO2. There are also plenty of parafluorocarbons locked in the Martian soil which could be extracted using heat, and these would raise Mars's temperature even further, as would reducing the albedo of the Martian surface to make it less reflective. Basically, if the red planet was black, it'd be so much hotter. Hmm, maybe we should ask Rachel Dolezal for some tips on how to convince Mars to self-identify. Number 2. Take My Breath Away Oxygen is a pretty fundamental requirement for life on Mars to persist outside of an air-locked dome. To provide this, NASA has suggested that we could use bacteria and algae to create O2 naturally through photosynthesis. Unfortunately, planetary scientist Chris McKay thinks we'd need 100,000 years of photosynthetic life doing their thing to give Mars a level of oxygen similar to Earth. Bioengineered creatures could be used to potentially speed up this process, but it's probably going to take us a hell of a long time no matter what we use to do it, unless we give Mars a little MOXIE. MOXIE is an acronym which stands for Mars Oxygen In Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, so it should have been called Maurice Rui. But I'm not going to argue with the space guys because that never ends well. 
Moxie is an experimental device which can produce oxygen from carbon dioxide using something called solid oxide electrolysis. Here on Earth, we use electrolysis to remove your grandma's neck hairs. But on Mars, the same procedure could be used to provide liquid and gas oxygen wherever you are on the planet. The problem is, we'll need to develop this technology a lot before it becomes useful for terraforming an entire planet. Right now, Moxie takes two hours to make 20 grams of oxygen, which is roughly one quarter of a fart. <laughs> I'm not kidding, I googled it. Number one, make it rain. If we're eventually going to sow Martian crops, ruin Martian barbecues, and shoot the ending to Martian romantic comedies, we'll have to figure out a way to make the sky cry soggy tears from the heavens above. Outside of a Martian strip club, the only way to make it rain on the red planet is to increase its atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure can be boosted through one of two ways. Make the planet more massive, or increase the amount of gas in the atmosphere. Feeding a planet nothing but chicken wings and full-fat coke would take forever to produce the desired results, so it's likely we'll have to focus on boosting the weight of the atmosphere instead. But this isn't easy. Even with all the global warming shenanigans here on Earth, the enormous size of our atmosphere means our impact on its pressure is relatively small. An alternative and far more spectacular method would be to direct several massive asteroids towards the planet. Comets full of water and carbon dioxide ice would release both the gas and wet stuff we need to create both standing and atmospheric water. And we'd need a fair few of these bad boys too since Earth's atmosphere currently contains 37.5 million billion gallons of water. I'm surprised it can hold so much without needing to pee. This, along with many other monumental tasks on this list, may be unachievable for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. The task of terraforming a planet is something humanity must dedicate itself to for a long period of time. So when it comes to choosing a planet or moon to terraform into a second Earth, we must ensure that we pick the best candidate for the job. For decades, we've lazily assumed that Mars would always be our next stop. But are there other worlds out there more suited to human life? Have we detected planets or moons which don't require as much of a renovation job as our neighbor, the Red Planet? We're going to investigate this in our bonus video, Second Earth, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless of course you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. 
and in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strangemysteries.